Okay, I'm here with Sean McNulty, who's a member of Mental Performance Training, and we're going to go through um, some nutrition information to get a bit of a gauge on what his dietary patterns are and to provide some general recommendations on how those dietary patterns might be improved uh, to help him meet his health and wellness goals. And this is part of the assessment for topic two, assessment four. Okay, so your name is Sean, obviously, Sean, <laughs> and address... 22 Barrington Circuit, Caroline Springs. Contact number? 0417-999-428. And your occupation? I am project manager. Great. And date of birth? Is the 3rd of the 8th, 79. Which would make you 39. Which would make me 40 this year, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. so we'll start with the, um, some general questions around your health history, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. So have you had a general medical check up in the last six months so visited GP and just had a bit of a yes. overall yes have you ever been told by your doctor or allied health provider so physio or chiropractor or, or yep. um, similar to avoid any type of exercise or strenuous physical activity no that's good no. do you have a family history of heart disease no do you drink alcohol yes <laughs> And so roughly how many, on average, how many standard drinks would you have per week? Ooh. Oh. Two? Yep. And are you currently a smoker? No. And what best describes your weight history for the last 12 months? Either stable, fluctuating, increasing or decreasing? Fluctuating. Mm -hmm. Do you have any current injuries? Uh, not current. I do have a, a, a yeah. back recurring back issue, but I think that's just yeah, weight related. Tell me just a little bit about that. So what happens? Where does it be lower back up? Uh, back? lower we back. Do? Get pinching nerves in my lower discs. Mm -hmm. Every time it happens, it's due not to not having the right core or mm -hmm. muscles in play. And that you've been told from a physio. You see physio. Correct. Physio GP. Do you drink tea or coffee regularly? Yes. And if so, how many cups per day? On average, On average five yep. to six cups of coffee a day. And are they all milk coffees or do you yes. have a mix? Yep. And any sugar? Yes, one sugar yep. per coffee. And they're what sort of coffees? Lattes? Magic yep. lattes? Lattes, yeah. And on average, how much water would you drink per day? On an average day. About a litre? Yep. So now we're just going to have a bit of a chat about your daily nutrition. So we've covered off on coffee and water, so mm -hmm. beverages yep. um, per se. But uh, take me through a typical day. So do you have breakfast? Sometimes. Okay, sometimes. And when you so do... So breakfast would consist of... Maybe a piece of fruit, so a banana. Yep. Um, maybe a piece of toast. Yep. And what do you have on the toast? Butter and Vegemite. Yep. And what sort of toast do you have? Uh, spelt. Yeah. Bread. Seeded grain. Great. Okay. And is it usually one or two pieces? Two. Okay. Uh, lunch, it probably is the, the unknown. Yeah. So lunch, I tend okay. to skip a lot of the time just due yep. to, to work. And mm -hmm. um, and then obviously I then end up paying for it by having a, a heavy meal in the evening, mm -hmm. um, which consists of anything. It could be um, a wet casserole with yep. rice or yep. pasta. It could be pasta itself. And um, what's in the... So the, and the rice, would that be white rice or...? Yeah, white yep. or brown, depending on what the wife cooks. <laughs> yep. Um but predominantly white rice. And the pasta Pasta, again. spelt pasta. Spelt, yep. Okay. Um, so I think, in all fairness, there's nothing necessarily too wrong with the evening meals because yep. there is a, a good so balance of meat and yep. or protein and, and vegetables. So what I sort think of it's protein the, is it? So it could be chicken, could be beef, yeah, lamb. So lean chicken yep. or... Fish okay. on occasion yep. as well. So yep, I think yep, yep. in that terms, it's not the ingredients or the method of the, the mm -hmm. product, it's the, the amount eating. So how much would you eat? So, so rather than just eating a, 
a small bowl yeah. or one portion because I didn't eat lunch. I'll come home and I could end up eating two to three bowls. Yep. Um, to sort of crave the appetite. Okay. Which means I end up and then yeah, like quite large bowls. Quite large bowls. Yep. yep. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, just what other veg are in the, is in the casserole? So uh, veg just... could be anything from broccoli to zucchini, yeah, okay. carrots, pumpkin, potato. So there's a good mix in there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So it's not just one meat and veg. Correct. Okay. And is there any other discretionary snacks during the day? So Sometimes I eat the naughty stuff, McDonald's or KFC on the way home in the afternoon. Yep. Um, and that's purely just to be stuck in traffic three, four o'clock, haven't had lunch. Yeah. Craving something and mm-hmm. I just pick up something on while I'm on the road. Convenience and yep. just want to fill your, your tummy in. Yep. Yep. Okay. And any other, just like, do you have any muffins or cakes or things during no, the day? Not usually. Really. Not no. usually. No. Okay. Um, so, given that, uh, so it looks like you have maybe two serves of veggies per day, a piece of fruit there. You're not too bad with the grain. There's the grains. So when we talk about grains, we talk about mostly whole grains and cereals and high fiber varieties. Lean meat, um, about two serves. Milk, yogurt and cheese, you, that mostly comes from your coffees. So that's there's quite a bit there. And uh, discretionary foods, maybe one to two serves. Okay. So um, we did have a bit of a chat beforehand, (laughs) which gave me an opportunity to have a look on the Eat for Nutrition calculators, which are um, a government source of information uh, that is developed by the, I think it's the National Medical Council. So it's a credible source of information that provides us with some guidance about what your daily energy needs are based on your level of activity and what you're you're eating. Um, So... Based on that, I've calculated that your daily kilojoule intakes should be around 12,305 kilojoules. Um, And this is, again, based on your physical activity level. So uh, you said your occupation was a project manager, and I'm assuming that that's fairly much office-based and, as you said, meetings and those types of things. Um, So no strenuous and no strenuous leisure activities. So you're, you're struggling a little bit to find time for exercise at the moment. So there's not much that happens outside of work. Um, and, and most of the time is spent on the computer um, and commuting. So that's where we got the 12,305 from. Uh, again, the eatforhealth.gov website has a um, daily serves calculator from each of the five food groups, which is based on your activity level and your, your age and your weight um, and your gender. And so they would recommend that you have six serves of vegetables and legumes or beans two serves of fruit, six serves of grain cereal foods, which are mostly come from whole grain and or high fiber, high cereal fiber varieties, lean meat, which could include poultry, fish, eggs, tofu, nuts, seeds, legumes and beans, Uh, two and a half serves of milk, yogurt, cheese or alternatives. And in terms of your additional serves or discretionary foods, so Again, um, there's two types of diets that the Australian Dietary Guidelines recommend. There's a foundation diet, which is for the most, the, either the smallest or least active, active in a particular group, or the uh, total diet, which um, includes extra serves and portions of things based on your activity level. So as an example, um, if you were a tradie and you were working on building sites, you know, five days out of 10, you're out in the elements, you're climbing up and down, you're, it's quite a bit of physical labor. Your kilojoule intake would go up a bit and you might add in some extra discretionary foods. Um, That also includes, the discretionary foods might include things that have sort of a bit more sugar and fat and those types of things. Or you could just add in additional, the recommendation is that you add in additional foods from the five groups, so whole foods. Yep. So for you it's it's zero to three based on your activity level, um, age and gender. So I guess... What we can see when we have a look at what the recommendations are and what you're currently eating in number of serves and, and portions, it says that your portion control, um, sorry, your portions are quite large, particularly at dinner time. Uh, sorry. Let's go back to what we've got here. There's a few areas I think I can see initially where we could uh, potentially make some changes to your dietary habits to kind of just kickstart and improve your health and, and wellness. 
and um, maybe help you lose a little bit of that weight if that's what your, your goal is. Mm -hmm. So six coffees a day is a fair bit. <laughs> and with the added sugar, that's six teaspoons of sugar <laughs> in addition. So I guess um, depending on palatability, if there's any chance of reducing the sugar in there or um, even potentially cutting down. cutting down the number that you have and replacing with water or herbal tea maybe. Um, so I'd maybe recommend if, you, if possible, could you, what, what do you think is realistic to cut down for number of coffees? Two, three? <laughs> three? I'll try three. And you could, you could even have them um, with less milk. So you could do sort of a half serve of milk. It doesn't have, doesn't have to be full lattes. Is that something that you could potentially do too? I'll try that one. Yep. yep. Okay. And so it looks like that lunchtime meal is where you struggle most and it has to be convenient and fit in with what your work is. And um, obviously your meetings don't happen at the same time every day. So you don't have a set time for lunch. So, uh, you know, meal prep's a really good thing to do if possible. Um, everyone's busy, but if you could prepare your lunches at least in advance, and that could be anything from some um, adding a bit more of that lean meat and a few more ve serves of vegetables in there. So, you know, your mixed salad leaves, your, your, um, your beans, um, and those types of things. So, or, or even a tuna or some eggs, um, that, that they're always easy to take with you and that could be possible. Mm -hmm. Or even your veggie soups, um, if you've got access to a microwave with a bit of whole grain bread. Mm -hmm. So is that something you think is yep. possible to do? Yeah. Uh, and then the snacks is the other one. So there's long. You said there's long periods in between, um, in between eating from breakfast to lunch. But there's also probably a, a question around whether your breakfast is adequate and you're getting enough in there. So um, there's nothing. Uh, you've got you've got a serve of your whole grain in there, which is really good. Um, and you've got a piece of fruit in there, which is great, but you might change it up a bit and maybe do muesli with some berries potentially and a bit of yogurt to mm -hmm. add a variety of the, the dairy sources in there as well, um, given that most of that dairy comes from milk alone. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And then, again, just snacks. So uh, when you hit that 3, 4 o'clock or, or your 5 o'clock and you're stuck in traffic and you're famished and you haven't had chance to, potentially haven't had chance to eat lunch, um, you've got something to go to quick, so really good snacks for, uh, or things that you could use for snacks are your nuts and seeds. They're pretty easy and convenient to eat and to carry and to um, push, uh, to sort of um, take with you in a Tupperware container. Yep. Um, so, and raw veggies, another good one. Carrots, celery um, with dips. Um, and... The, the thing with the, the dinners is hopefully if you eat a bit more consistent, consistently throughout the day, there'll be less of a less of a need, I guess, to eat as much at night time. Um, yep. you you'll feel fuller sooner. Sooner, yep. um, And I guess there's a couple of different things you can do. You can look at, there's a, a an app called My Fitness Pal, which helps you track. So you, you've got a daily kilojoule target. So now you can, even if you fill that out for a week, which gives you a really good guide of where you're at, um, and then it can at least let you tweak and say, well, look, I'm, there's too much in there. And then you can have a look back at what the daily choices are or what the meals are and where the, the main kilojoules are coming from. Um, so that's a really good way to track your calories and to help you stay within that boundary. Um, and also um, the, you know, being aware of portion control with things like your nuts and your snacks because they can add up pretty quickly and yep. um, they're, they're easy to kind of just take down. <laughs> So how does that all sound? Pretty good? Yeah, it's good. And there's no, from your perspective, any food preferences or I guess no. you've got to you know, consider what it is that you like and you're going to eat and it's going to be sustainable long term and fits with your, your lifestyle. It. Yep. Okay, great. I think that's it. All right, thank you very much. No worries, thank you.